All right, guys, we're here today with Nate Wilder from Selma, North Carolina. Is that correct? That is correct. That's where yeah. I hail from. Squirrel Daddy Kane. You can find him on Instagram and Twitter. He's not on Facebook because Facebook is what? Censoring? Uh, yeah, they metered like their the content. Right? I don't like that. Yeah, no you thanks. You can find him here on the outdoor watering hole as well. Uh, actually, how I found him, uh, myself, we posted a, a question. Who do we need to know? That is a squirrel hunter because I am going to try to get into squirrel hunting. I'm a big deer hunter. Squirrel hunting is something that I used to do as a kid, um, but I want to do it now as an adult and as I'm raising two boys, something I want to be actually good at. Um, and there's there's definitely an art to it is what, I've, what I'm finding out. And it's not just as easy as sitting in a tree stand deer hunting and having all the squirrels come to you because I think when you go squirrel hunting, all you see is deer. And the squirrels disappear, sounds like. <laughs> Correct. We see that same thing. If we wanted to see some squirrels, we towed a deer rifle. Yeah, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen that in a couple of forms. We have those days. It's crazy. So uh, Nate Nate has a, a website called Squirrel Hunter Journal. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of information about that and uh, kind of how you got into squirrel hunting? Uh, my cameraman is my web guy. My I say cameraman, my also hunting partner. So he, he handles most of my website backend stuff. He found out that I was journaling my hunts on my own in a binder. And he said, dude, we could put this online. People will dig this. And I said, okay, well, let's try it. Let's see what it's about. And it's grown from there. Um, my introduction in squirrel hunting was young. I cut my teeth with 14 single shot, uh, tail along behind my daddy and my, my grandpa. And, um, uh, I graduated to a 20 gauge, of my own. And then from there I went to the rim fire because I started to get the, uh, sniper feel. I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy, uh, shooting them from a long range and trying to put my round in the head. I like that precision. Plus it's a whole lot quieter. Uh, so yeah. that's where I kind of got into it and, and found my way around it, found out that I loved it. And, uh, always spent Thanksgiving hunting in my mom and pa's and we, we'd wax squirrels from Thursday till time to go home uh on, well saturday but you know sunday till we time to go home we would whack them all morning evening whenever we could hunt, we were itching to get out so now you you deer hunt you you do all other types of hunting but squirrel hunting is your your thing uh, yeah a deer is a target of opportunity these days so if i see one i want to shoot there's one that's too confused that they shouldn't be as close to me as they should <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can put some meat in the freezer that way. I like sure. deer sausage and uh, deer hamburger and stuff like that. It has endless possibilities. So, yeah, yeah their target's hunting. opportunity. So, what is it about squirrel hunting that makes you, I guess, enjoy that or or have a fiend for that more than deer hunting or, well, or any kind of hunting? Well, I, with deer hunting, you got gear involved. I don't have just one squirrel rifle. I've got multiples. I've got one for this occasion, one for that occasion. If I'm walking behind a dog, I need a lightweight rig. If I'm sitting and sniping, I want a Hubble telescope on top and, and a, a good suppressor. And I have perfected my craft over time. And I've finally got content with what I have pretty much. But every time somebody makes something you really want, you should buy more than one because they're going to discontinue it. That's kind of how it goes. Okay. Um, so a gear has grown over the years. Uh, there's a certain aspect of stuff that, that I collect and, and take with me in the woods every time I go. Um, and what it is about it that drives me to it is the fact you got camaraderie. You're going to have that in deer camp. You got that in squirrel camp too. Typically I can hunt alone and enjoy myself. I can hunt with friends and enjoy myself. A dog can be involved that makes things yeah. loud. You can be loud. You, you're letting the dog do the work. The dog sure. tracks them down and you go shoot them out of the tree. Um, but you can, you can pal around. You're going to get multiple shots. You're not going to sit in the deer stand all day, freeze, not pull the trigger. You get to walk. If I get cold, I get up and I move. Sure. Uh -huh. So going and being able to get exercise track squirrels down, stalk them. Some folks like to sneak in and shoot them at 25 yards. If I can see him, I want to be able to throw lead at him. That's my style of hunt. Some folks don't agree with it, just the way I do things. So you, I, I think the biggest thing I just took away is kind of the, like you said, you can go and pull the trigger multiple times, which is fun. 
Um, I mean, anyone can go to the range, but you're talking live targets now. And from what I hear, they're actually pretty tasty. Am I right? You make them right. Yeah. If you make them right. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit. So, like, if I am brand new into squirrel hunting, what is the best way to get started? What, what do I need to know? Um, Gear-wise, we can talk mm -hmm. tactic strategies. Like, what are your – if you had two ways or if you want to hunt with a dog, hunt over, you know, a feeder, sniper style, um, talk shotgun 22. Uh, what, what do I got to know to get a good first experience going out there? I'm not a giant shotgun fan anymore, but there's huge success with those. So if you got a single barrel, you can do everything you need to do. 410, I used to like use three inch shells on that. Uh, 20 gauge, 12 gauge, 28 gauge, 16 gauge. Uh, I've got an article on that. Uh, that's a great early season gun. Lots of leaves on the trees. They get up in the top, cutting a hickory nut. You can send uh, shotgun spread up there and knock them out. A little harder to do with a 22, but. I still prefer to do it that way. So shotgun's got a place. Okay. Um, 22 wise, oh, the sky's the limit. I was hunting with a guy this weekend. who's was using a $21, $2,200 hand shoots rifle. You know, that's out of my class. Sure. But my, my CZs will do essentially the same thing uh, at about 500 bucks. Okay. That's more my speed. I did write an article on the top six squirrel rifles under a five hundred dollar budget, so they get you glass, they get you a rifle, they get you ammo, they get you in the woods with the gun and taking squirrels. Okay, um, that's top six squirrel rifles on the budget. That's on your squirrelhuntingjournal dot com. Yep, Actually. I got a I got a frugal bone, and I tend to ease to the side of uh, let's get as much as I can for the dollar amount that I've got. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, now, go ahead. I I guess like. Aside from the gun, we've got, is there any specific gear, like for hunting whitetails? I mean, you can have tree stands and, and boots and camo and you it just keep, you know, you're getting thrown products nonstop, you know, if you watch outdoor shows or, or open a magazine. But with squirrel hunting, I mean, are you walking blue jeans and a camo coat or is, is it, can that's the last, you, you know, like. That's the last thing we started up, Grayton is camo clothing. We've gotten to the point where we're content with everything else and we're upgrading our camo clothing now because you can look like a lumberjack walking through the woods and kill squirrels. Okay. It's not a problem. Red and black flannel shirt, jeans, work boots, and a toboggan. As long as you're wearing your required orange here, sure. and you can do everything you need to do. But as time has advanced, uh, I like a good pair of boots because I'm on my feet a lot. Um. I just got me a coat with a pair of pit zips on it. It gets hot moving around. So sometimes you need the air condition, <clears throat> but you know, you don't have to have that stuff. Binoculars, a must got to have them. It's no fun pointing a rifle all around the woods, trying to glass. Okay. When I'm in the glass, I'm on the gun to shoot the squirrel. I'm not, I'm not, um, using that to do my squirrel looking. I use a good dedicated pair of binoculars. I like a good pair of gloves. I like a face mask that doubles as a neck gaiter um, so that I can keep cold out when I'm sitting and sniping. Uh, I use an ammo wallet instead of using a small box of 22 ammo because I like the fact that it's quiet. It keeps stuff in place. I've got them marked and, and labeled. So if I go with said gun, I got said ammo that goes with it. Made myself a squirrel stringer which is basically you take a metal stringer from Walmart, the ones that have the little binding hooks on them, yep. take those hooks out. I got a whole article on how to build one on Squirrel Hunting Journal. And uh, I towed them around that way. It's a, I don't know, you can make one for a couple bucks, pretty cheap. So I, I buy me a dowel rod and make them for all my friends so that I have them to hand out. Nice little gift to hand out in, uh, in camp. Um, range finder, got to have one. Uh, my longest kill confirmed on video was a headshot at 119 yards. And without a range finder, I would have never made the shot. Interesting. Um, uh, I, and that's probably about it. I like a, I like a pack. Slumberjack makes one. I hadn't got my hands on it yet, but I've got a ribs pack. I ain't hundred percent sure ribs is still in business. It's a camping, a camping front load bag. So I got my camera gear, my gloves, my ammo, if I need to do a reload, if I run the magazine dry, 
it's almost like military style. I can unzip the pocket, reach in, grab another yeah. mag, dump a mag, put another mag in. I watched a guy run dry this weekend before he put one bullet through two squirrels' heads. Oh, Never seen that happen. Witnessed it this weekend. Did not get it on camera. Wish I would have. Oh, man. So now you you just brought something. You said that you use binoculars. Um, I never would have thought that with squirrel hunting. Mm, I, gotta have honestly, God, like I remember just going back in my days with like a pellet gun or BB gun, just walking the trails behind my parents' house. If I see one, I shoot one. Um, I used to trap them a lot and I used to, I used to use it a lot and I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but I would take the squirrels and I'd give them, you know, to family members or friends that ate them. But all I was going for was the tail. Cause we'd send them in to get a dollar, you know, sending the mips. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as a kid, 13, 14 years old, you send in 10, 15 tails at a time. You get that, like, that was great. You get a discount on, on your stuff or you get the, and it was, it was worth it back then. Um, but I've never ate, I've never eaten squirrel. And like I said before, it's, it, you know, I've heard it's good. I've heard it's, it's rough. I heard it. It's kind of like bear. If you eat bear and it's cooked the right way, it's absolutely delicious. You cook it the wrong way and, and you probably never want to go back to it. Um, but having a pair of glasses, now it sounds to me, when I was a kid, I was just getting lucky when I'd walk through the woods and, and come back with one. Because you're, if you're actually glassing, you're, you're on the prowl, which I guess is why it becomes so much fun and entertaining to you is because now you're stopping. Are, are, how, does it, how does it start? Like, let's say you're, are, if, you're not, if you don't have a dog and, you know, you don't have, have like a sniper, you know, set up, how do you approach going hunting is there is there you know, are you going to the the oaks are you going certain places during certain times of the year where where do you start when you even even from a macro i guess let's say you want to find some public land that you know you want a small game hunt or squirrel hunt on how do you approach that property and what, what tactic do you take to to bring success to your your squirrel hunt I don't have a whole lot of experience on game lands, but the guys I've talked to that do use aerial photography okay. to take looks at where they want to go. I get a lot of recon from the deer hunters on the land. I, I hunt, they say, okay, I got deer stand here. There's squirrels all over this place. Come kill some. But yeah, you're right. Food sources is the big um, draw early season and we don't get to hunt this because our season comes in the second week of October. But when the hickory start almost to the point where they're hardening off, they're still green, but they're going to be long before they fall out of the tree. Uh, August, September, the squirrels are just killing hickory nut trees. Okay. Pecans are the same way, but pecans are not natural uh, around North Carolina. So we have groves of them, but they're not, they're not something that you're going to find actively growing in the woods. I've seen them eat beech nuts. I've, eat, I've seen them eat mushrooms, uh, maple, maple seeds in the spring, but we don't have a spring season. Um, definitely the white oak apron, uh, red oak, water oak, uh, willow oak. There's all kinds of oaks that they will, they'll take a stab at to eat. Um, chestnuts, we got black walnuts. They like those. Uh, we listen for a lot of cutting when they're grinding their teeth on the shell. I've got some footage of that. We use some of that this come this past week to uh, take a few squirrels, just listening to them cut. You can even hear them cutting corn. Jeez. They're, they're very, very that? noisy eaters. I, what What is frustrating to no end in the squirrel wood is to hear one cutting and go to glassing, and you yeah. can't find it. You, you can't find <laughs> I can it. Imagine because it's like he's throwing his voice. It's like that Tom and Jerry cartoon where yeah. Tom's throwing his voice and you can't find him. It's the same way. I'm looking all around. And sometimes they're sitting on the backside of the tree trunk and the noise is, is going out. Sure. But he's concealed to you. You can't find him. It is so frustrating. The so best now, ones, though, when they run up the tree and they're chuggering, they're mouthing off, yep. and they go to flapping that tail. That's an automatic, here I am, shoot me. Those are the best. So, okay. I want to get back to that. You got food sources. Now, what are, are you walking and stopping glassing? Are you looking for something? What, how does your, how does your brain work on that? I can sit somewhere for about 30 minutes. And if I don't have activity, we discuss this all the time. If I don't have activity, I'll get up and start moving or I'll get up and I'll go pick me another spot. 
Okay. In the late of the year, you can shoot much longer distances. In the in the first start of fall, you can walk up on squirrels because it's brushy. Sure. It's green. So the fact that I could use either strategy of hunting, they work, but I kind of got squirrel brain myself. So if I sit for 30 minutes and nothing's happening, I get up and move. Well, I move and nothing's happening. Happened to me this weekend. Well, you know, the spot I just left, I bet it's teaming squirrels right now. I bet squirrels are running all over the place. It, it, it's a constant chess game in my mind. If I just left the hot spot, no, you didn't. You should go walk and look for squirrels. Sure. It's a it's a battle that we fight so, because you think they're so plentiful. And then you look at a piece of woods and you go, wow, this place looks like it. squirrels should be everywhere. And they're not. But it's well, it, I know it, they're there. You, they're always there when I'm deer hunting. Well, if you look at if you look at the deer <laughs> stuff and y'all y'all pattern deer on feed times sure. and moon phases and stuff like that, I think it plays into the squirrels also. Really? Okay. I do. So do you see a lot of activity early on in the day? Is it all day long? Is there like a better time that you pick, or is it just kind of like, hey, I wake up and I do my chores and you know, then I head to the woods at nine o'clock or ten o'clock because it's gonna be a little bit warmer. Typically, if it's sunny, we like to get into woods about 30 minutes before sunlight. Okay. We get in, pick our spots. My buddy, LeBrad James, my cameraman. Yep. We we scrape out a spot with our feet. So if we need to do any moving, we're quiet. We pitch us a chair and we see it. Okay. We just wait. If it's, if it's later season and I'm walking and it's misty or cloudy or something like that, I've killed squirrels to noon just because they're out and they're active. If you catch them on a banner day, and if you catch a hot female, there's such thing as squirrel root. Those two that got it through the head was the last, that was the last pair. My buddy Danny killed four, four squirrels. We got into a hot female on the creek. I think we took six out of there. I took one. He took the rest. He was in a good position to see them all. And that last shot he took with one through both heads was the hot female and the last male that was left trying to, uh, Leave seed for later. Is the rut only a certain time of the year like deer hunting? They're rodents. They, they. All the time. Uh huh. So you could, if you catch them on the right time, we killed 10 out of one tree before because there's one hot feet man. Is that when they're chasing each other around the tree like that? It, it can be. That can is be. That that can, I always feel can, like they're pissed off at each other. When and that can be, that can be it. But a, okay. a lot of it, a lot of it's got to do with breeding. Now, can you tell? It always amazes me, even with bear, and maybe that maybe that's something. I guess once you get good at it, but like you can tell, oh, oh that's a boar, that's a boar, that's a sow, and I'm looking at it like that's a deer. Yeah. And I also used to look at bucks; they'd be like, "Oh, we're gonna pass that buck," and I'm like, "That's an eight point buck." Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, mm, "That's a one thirty. We're gonna let him go. I want to. I want a six and a half year old." So now right. I understand it. But with squirrel, is there a way to tell if it's a? Do they call it? What do they call it? Male and female? Is there a, is there a name? That, that's for it? that's what that's what I call them. Male. Uh, and female. Um, I, I I don't know how to distinguish. Um, I'm not. Oh, I'm, not I, I'm not that good. We have we have gooded squirrels before and had young, and that's disheartening. But yep, it happens. I couldn't tell when she was hunted foot up in the tree. That right, sure. Yeah, you know, she was pregnant, but. No, we have no way of distinguishing. It would be nice if we did. You know, it would be like the birds, you know, cardinal, nice, bright red, females, brown, easy to distinguish. Yep. But you now, can't get that in the squirrel. Um, when you are, I guess, when you're targeting these squirrels, when they're out, when you have, I just lost my train of thought. I, was, I had one idea and I'm moving to another now. Sorry. When you, no, 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 it's really fine. When you have, um, you know, an idea, like, let's say you're just going through the woods, you sit down. Um, are you, is there daily bag limits? Is there, is there something that says, okay, now's the time to go. Now's the time to move to a different spot. Okay. Today's a horrible day. Like, are there good days, bad days? I'm sure there are. Um, but I guess what makes a good day? Is there, is there better weather? Is there, uh, obviously seeing squirrels, but aside from just seeing squirrels, what makes a, a good day to go out like man i'm working today and today would have been a good day to hunt Mm, yeah is there anything that i I, I like sunny days i can kill them on cloudy days um no wind i prefer no wind you know three to five miles an hour no wind is considered but 
Like we had some 15, 21 mile an hour gusts this past week. And that's a great time to hunt a dog because if they are out there, they're more um, susceptible to predation with the wind. Now you got aerial attacks with how hawks and owls try to put those two together. Um, you have ground attack with coyotes, foxes, raccoons, you know, whatever else is after them. So predation is high on a windy day, but if you got a dog and they're out feeding or they're out doing whatever they're doing, dog put them up a tree. Whereas if I'm moving along myself, ain't no telling how many that we walk by. They just sit there. Uh, yeah, they just they don't hear you. They, don't they just slide around the backside of the tree, and you never knew they were there. I walked by one this weekend. Had not had I not had my binoculars and glass the tree. I was finishing the glass when I was dropping them out of my eyesight and caught what I thought was a squirrel. Looked back up, reconfirmed. Sure enough, laying up in the tree, watching me walk by. So there's no leaves on the trees now. When you're when you're glassing, like for deer, for example, if I'm if I'm stalking or if I'm you know still hunting is what you know, and I prefer like like you said earlier, misty day, wet ground where I can move very slow. Yeah. But I'll take like ten steps and I'll glass and I'll sit there for five minutes and I'm moving on glass. I'm I'm going up and down trees and I'm looking for horizontal. And I'm looking mm -hmm. for a color. Is there anything when it comes to squirrels, when you're glassing, like you said, the tail flicker, is there anything Definitely. that you're looking for specifically? Cause I mean, a squirrel can be up like this or it can be out long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gotta be difficult when you're doing that. The, the, where the branches meet the crotch yep. where the branch comes into the trunk. That's a great spot for them to back into. So you're looking up the tree trunk all the way up and back down probably the other side. And then right. Or I scan horizontal in the distance looking look at, at treetops all together. Okay. Yeah. Den holes. I always look for den holes. That's like a squirrel high rise. You know, they got little holes in there. I've shot squirrels out of dens before. Really? Yeah, you know, just sticking their head out. Just be up over enough. Most of the time when you make a head shot, you get what's called disinhibition, where the brain can no longer control the muscle function. Ted Beer, um, Oh, gosh. Uh, Ted's holdover. He's an air rifle enthusiast up in Wisconsin. He's got a great video that he interviewed a neurologist, and he talks about disinhibition. So the, the brain is disconnected from the rest of the body. The brain can no longer tell the body to hold still, sure. so it starts shaking. So that's why they kick out. So if you shoot them in the head and they're at least elbow out of a den hole, a lot of times they'll thrust with their rear feet and We're come not. out. Yep. Interesting. Come out. Okay. Yeah, because when you just said that, the first thing I was thinking is, man, shoot it in there and go right back in. But that makes sense. And, and sometimes it happens. So you gotta you gotta evaluate your shot so that you try to get your meat. It don't always work out because you know sometimes we wound them. I nose pierced one this weekend. My gun was off. Didn't realize it. Must have bumped it or something. But I nose pierced one, and we spent thirty minutes trying to get it out of a hole. Ugh. A smoke bomb is a good thing to carry. You don't want to set a man's woods on fire, but if you got a smoke bomb and you can drop it down in a tree hole, typically you can smoke them out. Interesting. Now, we do they have any? I know I see squirrel nests a lot in trees. Um, do they live in the ground at all? Is that something they do too, or no? Is it mostly just? I don't know that they do here. I know that there are holes in trees at the ground that I've seen them go in and out of. Okay. Um, yeah, typically they're either a nest or a den hole. And I think they use those den holes as the season gets colder for warmth. Uh, to get the wind off of them, the rain off of them, that kind of deal. So as far as calling, do you have any success with that? Or is that gimmicky? I don't really waste my time. No. I think it's I think it's interesting that the guys put the two ridges of quarters together and rub those together and it kind of sounds like a squirrel chewing a nut. But I don't cool. know that that would draw them out to your to your area. I'd just rather go mobile. So there's uh, no there's no way uh, probably not no way, but there's not right. really a way to go out and attract squirrels to you. You have to find them. I, that's that's my highest rate of success. I I hadn't spent a time. Now the calls are pretty cool. You can really aggravate your dog with it. The ones that just shake side <laughs> to side and sounds like a barking barking squirrel. I, a novelty item at best. I don't have any reviews of that stuff on my website just because I don't use it. I'm See. sure there are guys that have success with it. The, sure. the squirrel whistle. The squirrel whistle is a young squirrel in distress. <laughs> maybe okay maybe I, not something i waste my time on not not your high probability not for me okay now 
we talked about food. We talked about location, how you glass for them, how you move about. Um, before we get into the cleaning end of it and then into like recipes and whatnot, what, have, what am I missing if I go out to the woods for the first time? I, I understand like maybe go sit for a little bit, um, look around and walk, sit, pick another spot, walk. Are you, I guess, are you, when you leave that spot, are you just going to the perimeter that you could earlier see, or are you trying to go completely to a new spot where you're like, man, we need to go back? <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes it just, it really depends on over years of hunting them and watching them move cut over edges up against mature forest is a good spot to be. If you've got a thicket of young pines, I've seen them running in and out of pine trees into the forest to to uh, to feed oak ridges, oak flats, uh, anywhere close to a river or stream of water. Matter of fact, the first one I saw the the the, the, the um, breed fest was on a creek, was on a very very narrow creek coming down out of a hill with a brushy hillside, and just about every one of them was on the creek. So. Creek edges, river edges, that type of stuff is it's a good place to find them. They do drink water. They don't drink a whole lot. I've I've seen a few drinking while I've been out. Uh, but you know, they may drink some off a leaf and not worry time going to to water sources like a, a deer does. Um no whole lot other. I, another piece of gear I forgot to mention is a pair of shooting sticks. I like to shoot from my rear That's end or, or I like to shoot from my knees with my butt on my heels. And we used the Jim Shockey Primo's trigger stick tripod and it's worth it, over a hundred dollars. But by golly, if you want to get solid on a squirrel and it makes a nice rifle hanger too, when you're sitting That's and the, just waiting. That's the one that you can squeeze and adjust up and down, right? It's uh, whoever engineered that. It's fantastic. We love it. We love so, it. Is there, so when I, when I'm watching a deer and I, this is just the only thing I can compare it to, but when I'm watching a deer, I'm watching his or her ears. If it's back this way, you know, they're listening behind them. If they're one to the right, one to the left, they're doing this, the tails up, tails flickering. I can read and understand almost what's going through that deer's mind. Do squirrels make, the same gestures like you were saying the tail flicker are they i mean i know i've i pissed off a squirrel and i can just tell i've pissed him off mm-hmm. he's barking at me and he yep. <laughs> right and i'm like yep that's when a suppressed 22 comes in real handy suppressors are legal where you're at you can funk them and it won't bother the deer so do they what what types of i guess uh Body gestures, calls, what do they do that, that help you read a squirrel a little bit better? You get what we call, we, we call the chugger, the digga, 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 and they'll flap their tail and stuff like that. That's letting everybody know, to my knowledge, that warning something's not right, uh, let's get up and hide for a second. And then some of them will make that wheeze and call, bee, bee. it's real light. Yep. I, I don't know what that means. But to me, that, that lets me know as a squirrel in the area, maybe I can head that way. Yeah, but uh, I don't really understand their communication. I understand what you're saying. But, you know, sometimes they'll stand up on their hind legs and raise uh, their paws like a prairie dog. Uh, you know, when we were corn hunting this weekend, we'd let them get a piece and start to eat the embryo and corn out because that's all they want. They leave the they leave the endosperm. They don't yeah. they don't the deer and the coons and stuff. They mop that up. So you let them grab that, get in a position, and start working it, and you. You be ready to thunk them at that point, or you let them pick that next piece up. And as they start, you get on them then. You don't want to pull the trigger right as they're pulling that Keanu Reeves matrix move and going down, and you sail one over their head. Sure, because it happens. So they're they're comfortable, or my like, and I, I keep going back to whitetail. Same thing. When a deer's head is up, then the risk of them, you know dropping or what they you know what they call jumping your ducking the string yeah the risk of them they have to go down and then the body goes down where if the head's down and i take the shot all they got to do is lower their the rest of their body so i always try to shoot a deer you know that mat the last last word uh-huh. you always hear before they go um so a squirrel you want after they've picked it up and they're gnawing on it 
Yeah, you want you want to be in the gun on the trigger, and when he starts coming up with that piece of food, a safety off. You're on the gun. You're ready to go hot and send him a hot lead facial. That's what you're ready to do if you're hunting with a rim fire. Well, that is something. So I have I actually bought my house based on a piece of property I live by, and I've hunted it. I don't know, 10 times. First time I was out there, 120 inch buck comes by and I'm like, I'm going to pass him. That's what I'm seeing the first time. And I've never seen one that big since, but it's public (laughs) land. It's a, it's a park and it's eight, 900 acres and I can squirrel hunt it, but I can only squirrel hunt it with a shotgun. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, maybe just buy a 410. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe I just, I have a, I have an old 69 uh, wingmaster that I've, I had an improved cylinder barrel on. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a modified for. Um, but what's a what's a good shotgun setup? Because I I know I've a couple places I've spoke with people or kind of read up on shotgun can lead to having to you know try to find the pellets or the BBs pull them out. Um, it can push yeah. air into your into your shot where like you know you're shooting with the lead. It's it's you know like you're saying headshot every time is what you're going for. You've got the meat. It's clean. You pull it off. It's clean. Mm-hmm. Um, what is something that, you know, am I looking for a full choke, extra full? Am I looking for an improved? Am I looking for modified? Is there the smaller the gauge, mode? the smaller the gauge, the fuller the choke I would go because okay. you're trying to, you may be trying to get to the top of a tree and that's why I use three inch shells and a 410 instead of two and a halves. Okay. Um, uh, break barrel, single shot will do the job most of the time. That's what I cut my teeth on and I moved to a pump, a semi auto, you know, just about anything use the squirrel hunt weed but choke wise i would go to the tighter pattern um 12 gauge probably seven and a half eight to work same for 20 gauge i don't know a whole lot about 16 but i would assume close to the same 410 really expensive so really? some people shy away from those yeah 25 shell box is probably i don't know 10 or 12 dollars a box where you can buy seven and a half and eights and 12 gauge for three and a half bucks yeah. and four dollars of course we're in ammo getting <laughs> part due right now right so if you didn't stock up that's we did we had that discussion recently too we we're glad we stocked up on ammo when we did when we found stuff that shot good for our guns we did group buys on case because case pointed to get best price and okay. i probably got enough squirrel hunting ammo to get me to 65 or 70 if i if i kill 150 squirrels a year Wow. How many do you kill a year? Right now, I'm currently at 104. Last year was 119. I've progressed as the years have gone by because I've put more time to it. And okay. plus, we're traveling to different areas within the state to, to hunt more. We've found friends that are like, yeah, we'd love to have you in camp. Let's go. And that's kind of the way it was this weekend. So do you have a camp dedicated strictly to squirrel hunting or is it like a, just a hunting camp and you just do all sorts of hunting there? It's a bird hunting preserve, but it okay. that's what I it's what I've deemed the squirrel hotel and spa. Okay. Very cool. So I go out, I kill my squirrel. I've seen people skin a squirrel. I've seen people cut right underneath the tail and pull the legs. What's a what's the best way to do it? That's my preferred method. Um yeah. some folks and when my daddy was trying to teach us how to do it, you cut them down the back and try to peel the skin off. Well, they're tough skin rascals. So that gets to be tedious. So yeah, the cut behind a tail is what I like. I've got a dedicated set of tools that I use. I've got a Delico, not Delico, a Spyderco Delica 4. It's got VG10, VG10 steel, so it is less prone to rust. So when I get done with that, I can wash it up and I can throw it in the bucket wet and I don't have to worry about it. I have a squirrel gambrel. Sadly, they're not being made anymore. You hang it on a nail or a branch in a tree it clasps together and it'll pinch the meat of the tail between the two pieces of metal. And then you can pull the squirrel out of his, out of his pajamas and you're there working with a clean piece of meat. I like to use a slick bark tree when I do it. Don't use a pine tree or something that's got flaky bark, because you're going to get that mess all over the meat. Sure. A pair of pliers. I just ordered catfish pliers a day because my buddy uh, at squirrel camp uses catfish pliers. You hook them on your britches when they tear apart. Yeah. So you, Upper part of the pajamas goes up. You left with the breeches down below. You pull them off to the ankles, and we use a pair of goat toenail clippers or goat hoof clippers. And you snap them feet off, and 
basically we take the meat now. You can skin them full and take the whole from from the base of the neck down to the the bottom of the ankles and take the whole squirrel like that, but you're going to do a gutting process. Now we clip the back legs off and cut them just where the rib cage starts on the back strap and the tenderloin and pull that out and then cut the pelvic girdle. And that's what we use because those are the biggest pieces of meat on the squirrel. If you want to mess with the front shoulders, sure, there's some meat on there and you can take those front shoulders. Um, Mm -hmm. If you're making a Brunswick stew or something like that, you may want to do it that way, but they store and pack a whole lot tighter if you, if you pair them out. Okay. You know, cut the pieces off. But those cattle shears or toenail shears are a great piece of kit. And it seems like there's something else in my bucket that I use. I can't remember what it is, but those are the four biggest tools I have. And a lot of guys make different squirrel skinners. There's ones that you can hook their feet in the back. It's just a flat piece of metal with a couple cutouts. They also make one with a kind of like a reverse teardrop in it that you can hook the tailpiece in. I like to do all my stuff standing up. If you bend over and pull them up your boots, you can do that and you can be fast with it. Uh, but we've got we've got trees that we use, dedicated four by fours with with nails in them and stuff like that that we use. Hang my tools all around it. We get to work and I don't know. Danny said he skinned sixteen in about forty five minutes the other night. Wow. Yeah, we were still in the woods. He had already limited out. He's like, I'm gonna go clean those squirrels and he hammered them. So. Are you going? Are you going from the back? I was I was trying to listen to your pajama s- section there. Are you going from the back legs up to the head? Is that right? Right. So when you cut through the tail, you got to go through the bone and through the two ligaments that are on the back that allowed him to do that, that tail waving. Yep. And if you, a lot of guys use forty five degree angles up the back. We cut kind of straight across where the hips meet the top of the thighs. Okay cut across about right there. And then when we stick them in that gamble and pull down, as the skin starts to come up, it meets at a spot on the belly and kind of comes to a V point and pops. It pops loose. You get a pair of pants and the upper goes up top saying. as you pull down. Okay. I really got to shoot a new squirrel hunt or squirrel cleaning video. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I've got one, but people don't like it that much. It's got a lot of dislikes. But <laughs> I, I, I'm, not trying to explain to people. I, I'm trying to teach you how to clean a squirrel, I'm not show you how fast I can do it. Right. Yeah. There's always, I had a, yeah. I had a, uh, man, we went four miles back on a whitetail hunt. My brother-in-law um, never been hunting before and he wanted to get into it. So I'm like, you film and you come with me, tell me if you like it. Well, I tripped and hit my bow. And so I'm like, all right, I shot at a stump and I was a little off and I'm like, okay, I think I'm good. And then, well, there's a squirrel there and he's just barking in the tree and I pull up my shot. Arrow went right into the tree high. So I'm like, crap. So I adjusted real quick, drew back again, shot, missed just to the right, but it was close enough that I knew I was good. And I'm like, oh, I was going to leave that part of the video out. The whole video itself was awesome. We went four miles back, shot this buck out of the swamp. We quartered it out, packed it out. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Public land hunt. But no one cares about any of that. All they care about is this idiot that shot and wasted two arrows on a squirrel. Well, if I didn't shoot and waste two arrows, I would have you never had a deer. I would have never hit that deer, which mm-hmm. I still ended up hitting him a little high. I ended up spining him and then came through with a foul shot. But it was all all anybody cares about. And, and that's one of the biggest things when we started the outdoor watering holes. We want positivity. We want to bring people together, you know, talk shop and whatnot. And it's there's there's so many people that are ready to attack you and like you said i put a squirrel skinning video up there and all anybody's talking about is how fast i do it or how slow i am yeah and and, and yeah how could you shoot that sweet little creature and i said look i like to do my grocery shopping in the woods if it bothers you guess what you're in control you can turn the channel that's all you gotta do i know it's up to you you know that's it's up to you so you've got the squirrel skin or scun i don't know what the proper terminology is for that how are out of his pee, what's, your, what's your favorite way to cook them? Brunswick stew. Absolute okay. favorite. Brunswick okay. stew is my favorite. And if you are shy to the squirrely flavor, I don't use the squirrel broth. I'm not a big fan of it. I use chicken broth in lieu of. Some There's people. a squirrel broth? Or you're saying? Uh, yeah, you, when you, when you boil them or when you parboil them, yep. crock pot them, however. Yeah, a lot of guys use that juice. 
No, it's not for me. Uh, and I've not, I may not be a purist when I say that, but sure. I, I use the chicken broth, but if I cook them in a crock pot, I typically do it overnight. Uh, a lot of times guys like to take their young squirrels and their old squirrels and I saw that part of my difference. Yeah. The cook, the, the young ones cook a whole lot quicker. You, you tender them up a whole lot quicker than the old ones. The old ones like boot level. So you got to pressure cooking them is even better than crock pot in them. Okay. Because pressure adds more heat. You get a quicker turn, soften the meat up faster. So I like to part them out. I'll cook them overnight in the crock pot, probably six hours, seven hours on high. In the morning time, I put them in another pot. I let it cool. Got a whole video detailing this on how to make yourself okay. a squirrel brunzo stew and uh, debone them. And then once I debone them, then the stew process starts. So the tomatoes and the ketchup and the Texas peat and the vegetables and all that. And then you just take your deboned squirrel meat and dump it in at the very end, stir it up, let it cook for another, I don't know, 30 minutes. And you so need a you, cheese sandwich to go with it and you're in good shape. When you throw them in initially into the crock pot overnight, are you throwing them in? You're not throwing them in whole, are you? Just the quarters? Oh, no. Huh? If, they, if they're whole, I'll throw them in whole. Throw them in whole. And then while and then my dogs are harassing me while I'm deboning, I'll just take the flank meat in between the rib cage and where it kind of meets the stomach wall. Yep. Yep. I just feed that to them. Here y'all go. Okay. Some, here's your reward for getting me some squirrels. Very cool. So they're in their hole, six, seven hours on high at night. You take them out and you, you pull the meat off. Yeah, you debone. Let them cool a little bit because they're hot. And are you de-bone. seasoning them before you put them in? I don't. No. I let the Brunswick stew do it. Now, if you want to do a, a squirrel and dumplings, you might want to season the water a little bit. Okay. A little bit of salt. A little bit of salt water don't hurt. Some guys, when they freeze them, they put them in bags of water so that the freezer burn doesn't get to them. You're freezing so, them after you've skunned them or skinned them, right? Right. Freeze them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I probably got 75 in the freezer right now. Uh, we just, we, we go, me and Brad, we'll, a little Brad, his YouTube moniker. We'll go and uh, um, kill squirrels, and we come back and skin them, pack them up, put them in my freezer, pack them up, put them in my freezer. I'll boil meat, debone, put that back in my freezer for a quick burn to do if I want to make one. Sometimes I just do organic dog food, and I'll do two crock pots full. I'll debone. I'll feed my dogs for two weeks. Interesting. Never even thought it, of that. Do, it does not go to waste. Now, have you ever done jerky or anything like that out of squirrel? I we talked about it, but I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about it. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not here. Sorry. Welcome You're to right. the party, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh-huh. Um, so then you make, most of the time you make sandwiches out of them. Is that what you're saying? Or you do all sorts of different things when you're done with them? Squirrel, squirrel, uh, fried squirrel and biscuits is popular. Biscuits and gravy. Okay. Um, you got to make sure you get them tendered first, though. You want to boil them first before you fry them. Basically, you're frying is you're just cooking your seasoning. That's basically all you're doing. Maybe a minute, minute and a half on each side in a hot cast iron pan. And you're just browning that breading that you're putting on there. So you're um, cooking them before you before you brown them or before you bread them. Correct. Correct. The meat is fully done before you bread and just pan sear them. That's basically what you do. Oh, so you're always cooking them the same way. You're always throwing them in the crock pot or no? <sighs> Pretty much. There's some guys at squirrel camp sometimes that do hot wings, but it's hot squirrel eggs or hot squirrel okay. backbone. You know, that same kind of deal. You drop mm-hmm. them in a little bit of fryer, but you boil them first. So you tender them up. Otherwise, it's like eating bicycle inner tube. It's just rubbery. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real tough to get into. That's why I like Brunswick stew. It's simple. Okay. If you can do the, the soup, if you can make a vegetable soup yep. and you can debone chicken, you can make squirrel Brunswick stew. Okay. And lots of it. It takes about 12 squirrels to make five cups, and that probably makes, I don't know, four or five quarts of Brunswick stew. So it's enough to share with your buddies. But it'll be good enough that you might not want to. <laughs> so with you said young squirrel versus versus older squirrel is there how do i tell the difference in that how do i know that the young squirrel is a is it just the size of the squirrel skinning them they come out of their clothes a whole lot easier okay the the old ones are um much tougher and that's another pro tip too 
if you don't want the hassle of skinning them, skin them while they're warm. Okay. On a on a fall day, it's a whole lot easier to skin them if you leave them a little bit. But you're, they're more susceptible to spoilage. Like some of the ones we skinned this weekend were rock solid cold, and it's much harder to get them out of their fur. I bet. So skinning while warm is is a better thing to do. But yeah, uh, the smaller they are, it typically you can tell by size, but if you shook them out of their clothing real easy, it's it's much easier to tell that this is a young one. This is a uh, this is an aged one. So you of don't uh, you you're in the you're not in the field going oh that's a that's a young one I want that one or no uh, one there's nothing that like that. And and when it comes to males too the uh, the polite way to say this what we call them in the woods is their wachangas. The wachangas are much larger on a male squirrel than a than a adolescent male squirrel. That's the PG way to say it. <laughs> you, you copy what I'm saying there. That's the that's censored way. That... Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very cool. What am I What am I missing before I let you go? What What else do I need to know if I'm going to head to the squirrel woods this weekend? You got to make sure you're you're going to have fun. Yeah, because that's what it's about. I love spending time by myself, but I also love spending time with somebody else in the woods, be it a child. Uh, I've got a video of a guy, I t- a kid I took out there and took his first fox squirrel um, after doing a little range time with him. So spending time in the woods is a big part of it, enjoying the nature part of it, enjoying your friends, uh, going out and have a bite to eat at lunch, discussing the gear, the tactics. Uh, I mean, we get deep in the weeds on that stuff, but yeah, if you, if you just want to go out to the woods and stroll for squirrels, a shotgun will get it done. You need a grocery bag of some sort to put your squirrels in to tote them. Sure. Uh, you may want to wear a dove vest or something like that and put them in the back or rabbit vest or something like that. Uh, a box of bird shot will get it done. Uh, if you're shooting a 22, make sure you at least zero your gun at 25 yards. Okay. High velocity hollow point. I I like hollow points or a flat point. Round noses, you typically have more runoffs with you. Interesting. Some people get a little pissy about you shooting them in the head because they like to eat the brains. I'm not in that club. I want a headshot every time. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, that's that's basically about it. If you're gonna you, there's plenty of videos out there on how to skin them. That that I think that deters a lot of people. But if you get it down pat. You only need a few tools and you can you can get them out of their skin. It's Very not cool. too hard to do. I meant to ask you this. Um, what is so for like a deer, the number one thing is your scent. Like you can I feel like you can move a little bit, but if you're scent, if you are not scent free, you just decline your entire, you know, chances. Is there anything for squirrel? Is it movement? Is it scent? Is it sound? Um is it a combination of all three that make it? What, what is it that you need to be mindful of when you're squirrel hunting? It's a combo of two. Another reason I love squirrel hunting is I don't have to scent free. I can put my standard deodorant on, wash in some smelly stuff. I can spray Axe body spray on and roll out there. <laughs> Not that I do, but I could. And I could oh, kill my limit. <laughs> I could kill I could kill my limit of squirrels. But you you've you've definitely Oh, I lost my track. I lost my train of thought. Question again. I lost my train of thought. Is Hopefully it, you can edit that. Is it that. scent? Is it uh, movement? Motion? Yep. Uh, or sound. You're going you're, you're gonna to have squirrels that pick up on your sound. You're going to have squirrels that will pick up on your movement. And then you're going to have the, the squirrels that aren't too intelligent. And they're the first ones to go on the stringer. Yeah, Those you can. The ones that I always get. <laughs> I, I've got film of a couple running up on us when we were going to collect squirrels. They were chasing one another. They were within 10 feet. I was filming. I didn't even try to reach for my rifle. They were so close. They run in on us. They started chuggering at us. What do you do? I just like, all right, y'all get a free pass. It's just my fault. <laughs> so, yeah, if you got really, really intelligent ones, older ones, older ones typically will – Try to counter your movement. If you're trying to ease around a tree to get to them, they'll move, they'll move, they'll move. The dumber ones, the younger ones will come out on the end of the branch and set up and say, well, what are you doing? Why are you here? They get a hot lead facial. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So movement, you want to be quiet, move move with a purpose. 
I mean, I guess if you think about a squirrel, squirrels have to, they have to be mindful of predation from above and below mm-hmm. and their best, like you said, their best way to get or deter, they're quick. They can jump from tree to tree. They their can agility underneath stuff. They can hide above stuff. So they've, they've got an advantage and that's something that you've got to understand and encounter. Now, when, when you see a squirrel, let's say you bump a squirrel, you bump a deer, they throw their tail, they're gone. With a squirrel, I, where are they going? Are they going to the holes? Are they just trying to avoid you at all costs now? I guess that depends on the level of bump. Some of them run to the next county. Okay. Some of them will do like a groundhog if you've ever hunted them. They get to their hole or their place of refuge, and right before they go in the door, they turn around and look, and that's usually lights out. Because we're tracking at that point. I stay on them until until that point. But yeah, sometimes they run and just jump on the side of the tree and do their little twitch twitching motions. And if you can get on them, sometimes you can. Sometimes they like I said, they run for the next county. It just depends. It uh, there's I can't have a uh, moment of crystal ball and figure out what certain yeah, one's gonna do. A fox yeah. squirrel, completely different animal. They may run up in a tree or hide. Or they may go across the ground into the next county also. But fox squirrels are typically more uh, prone to hide. If they hear you sneaking through the woods, they do their best to camouflage yourself in a tree. But they're almost two times as big as a fox. I mean, a gray squirrel. And most of the squirrels in your hunt, or all I would say, would be gray squirrel. Do you hunt any red squirrel down there? Do you have a red squirrel down there? Yeah, the pine squirrel, or what's referred to here as a boomer. We don't, uh, they're in the mountains. That's not right. typically an area I hunt, but the southeastern fox squirrel is somewhat in my area, but all 100 counties now you can hunt them. You can kill one a day, 10 a season, and they come in a variety of colors. Is it? Is that the one that, the, we have black squirrels around here. Is yep. that we got, or is we that got black with white nose, but they're also are black, black phase gray squirrels. So if they're about the same, same that's size, as a, yeah. that's probably what you got. Because my black fox squirrel is, Close to a small cat. Wow. So you get a little yeah. bit more meat off fox squirrel. Probably. You do. They're, but their habitat's different. They like lob lolly pines, pine cones, stuff like that. So they get a little different flavor. Hmm. Very interesting. A whole lot, whole lot more meat. Very and a lot of times they end up as as wall art. I've got about $1,100 of fox squirrels on my wall. You quit, I quit <laughs> mountain a- deer and started, started doing fox squirrels. What's a what's an average price to get a, a squirrel done? Question. I drive an hour away so I can get them for one hundred and fifty dollars a mile, and my horrible. and my hometown is three hundred dollars a mile. Yeah, that's, so it's double the price. Wow! And you get a good job, one fifty. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's we had a lot of. I had one squirrel. For, not that I don't think it's the first one I ever killed, but we had an open open sight. Uh, I think it was a Marlin twenty two. It's a barrel. You load them like 18 in the barrel. Yep. That's the model, model 60. Model 60. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, my father had one and he took me squirrel hunting for the first time with that. And I was a good shot with that. I could, yeah. There's no way I could shoot like I used to at 12 years old that I, you know, I could. Oh, my eyes ain't that good anymore. No, I just, I know I couldn't. And, but I shot this squirrel. He kept, it was a red squirrel. He kept coming up behind this stump or behind this down log. And I shot him and I hit him right in the top of the head you canoed him yeah that's exactly what i did i went up picked him up i picked him up and another one come down and i shot that one so awesome. that one that one i body shot i shot right behind the that's you know what we watched on television back when tnn had the or mm-hmm. TNN whatever had the had the the outdoor show that's i'm old enough to remember that yeah and uh my dad actually had a guy at work he used to work at the mill at the time and he brought the squirrel in and he was going to have him, you know, do a, do a mount eating a deer antler and, and had this whole thing set up and he never ended up getting it back from the guy. I think the guy got it, oh. ended up moving away or whatever, but that would have been cool. I love the idea and that back then that was probably, well, if I was 12, that was 22 something years ago. No, I'm 34. Doesn't matter. I, it was, it was a while ago. 20, yeah. 22 years ago. Math you on know, the fly, baby. Yeah, oh, <laughs> but that would have been a cool mile. I don't know, probably sixty bucks back then to get something like that done. Who knows? But yeah, there's no telling the inflation. She's, cool. she's tough. Very cool. All right, well, guys, to check out more of Nate, make sure you visit squirrelhuntingjournal.com. Um, you have a YouTube channel. It's called what is it now? Squirrel. 
I, it was named back in the day as Nate Bone Buster, but if you Google Squirrel Daddy Kane, you'll see me in a camouflage fedora with some sunglasses on wearing a squirrel tail beard. And that's, giving you tip, giving you tips of the week, Squirrel Daddy Kane. I love it. Kane, like, C-A-N-E. Like, yeah, like Big Daddy Kane, but the the redneck squirrel hunting version. And you've got a license plate on your vehicle that says Squirrel Hunter. Is that what it yep. is? Yep. She's dead. I had that made in Florida. Mm-hmm. I, I got it made. Love that. That's great. That's perfect. So yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and obviously, like I said, go to squirrelhuntingjournal.com. Nate, I can't thank you enough. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to go out and then uh, I'll share with you my successes. But Yeah, uh, make it happen. Send me some pictures. Yeah, I will. I appreciate you. And uh, guys, to, to get more, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to Nate himself. And uh, hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me.